Welcome back to the channel. I'm Daniel. And for the purposes of this video, I've been flexible all my life, as far as I know. It, it's similar to the leanness thing. I've never known not being flexible. I don't think it's from training. It may be. I don't know. It is so hot. I've really been struggling. I've been trying to make videos and I get halfway or even five minutes through and it's just too hot outside. So I'm trying to get set up to do it well here. Flexibility for me has been um, a lifelong possession. I, I don't know, a condition. Um, when I was seven years old, I started Taekwondo training. Um, and by Taekwondo training, I mean more than one class a week, two or three, sometimes every day. Um, nine, ten years old. Uh, it just that's how our family was. My family, my father got us into that. And um, I was pretty, because I started at seven years old, I was already somewhat flexible and active. And I was able to move around easy. Um, the training in Taekwondo kept me flexible. Then when I transferred uh, gymnastics, of course, I increased my flexibility. And then after gymnastics, I just kind of maintained it. Um, I, I think, I don't know what it's like to not be able to move as a flexible person. And this is something that I have had comments come to me about. Um, I'll be doing something that to me seems normal, seems regular. And people will say, wow, you're really flexible. I was like, what? I, I, don't, I don't even notice. I, I do movements. I, I, the first time I noticed this, I remember I was um, at a uh, friend's house, our home. It was pretty much a little farm. Um, and I was helping her feed the goats. And instead of opening the thing, I just kind of stepped through the fence. And she looked at me and like, how did you do that? It's like, what do you mean? And I just stepped through. And, and I, I guess I was flexible enough to move a certain way to make it easy. And it did, I didn't think anything about it. It just seems like how you're supposed to do it to me. Um, and she asked me to do it again. And then she tried it and she couldn't do it. Um, my, my life, my decision-making process about how to move is based upon being flexible. So I don't know that inhibition of not being flexible. What I don't know those inhibitions. And, but I see them. I see people being inhibited because of the lack of their flexibility. And they think it's normal. Um, it's not normal to me. I, I don't understand it. I, don't, I can't perceive it. I cannot conceive of it. Um, it's difficult to explain that. I don't know how to move as a non-flexible person. I don't know how. I, I can't imagine it. When I haven't trained for a while, like when I was in the hospital and a little tight uh, after, it, for me, it's, it's absolutely miserable. Um, and by tightness, I mean it's like this. It's very, very tight. It's difficult to explain. Most of my life, um, and I think it has to do with ADD, ADHD, whatever people call it now. Most of my life, I have been, um, I don't want to say plague, but it's a condition where if I am still for any length of time, it feels like the surface of my muscles starts getting tighter and tighter and clenching. Not the muscle itself, but like the surface. It's hard to explain. So I get this body tension. And I've heard other people with ADD, um, ADHD complain about this too. The tension in the body, it doesn't go away until you move, until you release the tension somehow. Um, as a child in class, that's why, you know, squirming, it's, it's to, if I don't keep moving, it hurts. My body will hurt. And in class, for to tell me to sit still what, was a torture. It, it was like telling me, okay, it's time to hurt yourself. You need to be still now. So that's what it was like. I... I Sitting still is just absolutely miserable. I can't stand it. I hate it. Um, I don't know what that is. I don't know what causes it. I don't care anymore. I, I just not too hard to 
wiggling, jiggling, keep moving. It's easy. Um, when I do flexibility training, yoga, meditation, breathing, those things calm the body temp tension down. If I do them regularly, I pretty uh, rarely have it. Um, so yes, I do yoga pretty regularly. Not a full out hour long class, pretty much at least four nights a week. I have about a 10 to 20 minute um, sitting sequence of stretches that I do before I go to sleep. They help me sleep. They help my lower back and hips relax. Um, I don't know if people need to do these exercises or stretches, but I think probably they should. Um, it, flexibility training is something that I greatly disagree with HIT philosophy about. And when I say greatly, that's a, I'm, I'm minimizing my disagreement. Um, <clears throat> my life as a, as a flexible person, it, 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 <clears throat> I cannot understand the reasoning behind the, the recommendations on flexibility. Um, there is a discussion about the difference between increased flexibility and enhanced flexibility. Um, and that sometimes can mean to reduce flexibility. I disagree with that uh, for many reasons. I have met many yoga practitioners. I have met some contortionists. And I'm, by contortionists, I mean train, trained, exercised, and performing contortionists. Um, some of them were with a circ. Some of them were independent, just toured around. Every single one of the people that I've met who are extremely flexible, none of them, and I talked to some of them about this, none of them were ever hurt from the flexibility because of the flexibility. Proper training, whether it's strength training, whether it's flexibility training, proper training should not hurt you. If it does, whether it's strength training, whether it's flexibility training, if the training hurts you, you're doing it wrong. You're greatly doing it wrong. Um, just like in strength training, momentary muscle failure won't hurt you. Going to momentary muscul muscular failure will not hurt you. If you already have an injury, it's possible you could exacerbate it, but more than likely, uh, Strength training and flexibility training are not going to hurt you. Now that some of the people in the HIIT community will claim that hypermobility or hyperflexibility, like contortionists have, um, stretch the ligaments. Um, there's not really any research to back this up, um, that this is a problem. There's not any... Um, evidence from talking with people who are extremely flexible that this is a problem. Um, there's no benefit um, to your life in terms of moving to be extremely flexible, but you should be a little more flexible than average. Just like you want to be just a little more stronger than you need to be in real in daily life, you want to be a little more flexible and a little more enduring. Um, I guess this would be kind of based upon the idea of how strong is strong enough? How much training do you need to do beyond a certain point? Um, some people who are all in the always be prepared category will argue all of it, all of the strength. I, I get that. I get that. Same with flexibility. Um, but with the flexibility training, there are obvious limits of what you need to do. As a gymnast, if I wanted to do a Stalder, an Endo, a Straddle L, that's going to be a different level of flexibility training than the average person needs. That's going to be quite a bit more. So I don't recommend average person needs to do the type of flexibility needed or to possess the type of flexibility needed to do a Stalder, an Endo, or a Straddle L. Um, those are gymnastics terms. You can look those up. Um, to be average flexibility in modern times um, is based upon lack of movement. 150 years ago, I don't think the average person actually needed any flexibility training. Life itself provided that. Now, be what I'm doing right now limits my flexibility. It is very 
Um, I don't want to say damaging, but it causes reduced flexibility, normal flexibility. So what are you doing flexibility for? What activities do you do, you do in your life that could be enhanced from a little more flexibility? And I don't mean a lot more, just a little more. Um, most of our joints have a range of motion that is normal for daily life and a range of motion that is a little more than necessary. Um, I would say you want to train just slightly for that, just slightly beyond. One of the questions I'm going to probably get asked is what type of flexibility training? I don't know. I really don't. There are many, many types. Um, I'm going to suggest anything that is slow, calm, uh, it takes time. Anything that is jerky, bouncy, forceful, don't do that. We'll just that <laughs> those are the rules. Yes to slow, controlled holds. No to yanking, jerking, kicking, anything fast. That will that it's j literally just that simple. Proper flexibility training will not injure you. Proper strength training will not injure you. Um, I don't know. I think endurance training you could get injured. Um, one of the things about flex being flexible, and why I think some people associate injury and flexibility, is that people who are flexible, like me, tend to do more risky behavior. Being a gymnast, that's pretty much a show-off behavior. Um, it's, it's, hey, look at me, look what I can do. Yeah, yeah, that is, that's us. Um, but for most people, they don't do that. Most people are not a, hey, y'all watch this. Uh, you may have an occasional hold my beer guy, but it, it, he, are, he already is good at, he or she is already good at what they do, not trying something they might not be able to do. Um, don't... Don't assume that being flexible is the cause of the injury. It's what the flexibility enables. Just like being strong gives you the ability to do things, those things can create the possibility for more injury. Uh, being flexible, your limbs are able to move to more extreme ranges comfortably. You feel enabled to do more activities. Those activities tend to expose you to more risk. So it's not the flexibility. Uh, this stuff about uh, stretching the ligaments, yes, that can happen. I have seen no evidence. I have seen no data, no, not even um, uh, stories from other people where they've been hurt. Um, I have definitely seen people injured from improper flexibility training. That is a thing, just like people get injured from improper strength training. So, how much flexibility training do you need to do? The people who I know who are into flexibility training, are, they may scoff at this at first, but the, after they think about it, they will probably realize, eh, it's probably right. If you sit on the floor regularly, you probably don't need to do much flexibility training at all. Sitting on the floor, you have to move around. You have to move into different positions. You have to change your body around a little bit. Um, sitting on the floor, watching TV, talking with friends, doing things. I don't mean eating dinner. You can, but it's not necessary. But <clears throat> the positions you have to sit in, you have to move your body in, over time are just going to make flexibility happen. If you have a habit of doing that, you probably do not need to do any flexibility training at all. If you are a couch potato or a chair, you're most, if you spend more than an hour in a chair a day, you probably need to do some flexibility training. If you are an office worker and spend five or more hours in a chair, you are definitely gonna need to do strength training and flexibility training. That is just something you're not going to be able to get around. I know my hit friends and 
some of them, some of them maybe enemies will disagree with me on that. Um, I get it. I know your argument. I know why you're wrong. Uh, until you try flexibility training and do the flexibility, you won't know why you're wrong. Um, so if you disagree with me, I challenge you to try it first. Three months, add flexibility training to your workouts and you will feel a difference. You will report a difference. How long does it take to get flexible? Just like I, in my training with people, I try to get people to think a year ahead. Let me, I'll go through this. Let's do this right here. Imagine that you have trained for one year. You've focused on your eating, whatever that is, for one year. You've had days where you missed. You've had bad workouts, bad eating days. But over the whole of a year's time, you stayed on track. You had your free day for your eating, maybe, whatever your diet was. 80 to 90% of the time, you kept to it. 80 to 90% of the time, you kept to your training. After a year's time, what do you look like? How is your life different? How do you feel? What would you do different with more strength, with more flexibility, with more endurance? How would your life be different? If your life would not be any different than it is now, it's difficult to have the motivation or determination to do that. So you want to have a difference. What is going to be different a year from now for your life that the strength, other than health, that the strength, flexibility, endurance is going to provide for you? Without that knowledge, it's hard to stay, stay going. For me, flexibility provides relief, physical relief from pain. Um, for me, it provides freedom of movement, um, freedom of being able to do things that I'm not aware that I'm flexible. Um, I would not change that. Um, and that, that is, like I said, that is something I have disagreed greatly with uh, hit philosophy from the start. And I have not seen a reason that has, I have not seen a compelling argument or discussion that changes my mind on that. Um, if you can sit on the floor, you, you probably won't need any flexibility training. So I recommend trying it for a month. Uh, just over time, your hips, your legs, your thighs, uh, your low back, everything, you, you probably will acquire a little bit better posture, but everything will relax and uh, open up a bit more. It takes time. It's not immediate. You don't have to actually train. You just sit. Passive. Pretty easy. So anyway, give it a try. A year of sitting on the floor as much as you can. Let me know what happens. Thanks a lot. Talk to you all later.